So I know that today isn't my normal video day, but literally the day that I put out my last video, something came out that was a pretty big deal. So I'm sure that by now all of you have seen the trailer for Prehistoric Planet, and I, like all of you, were... Woo! Yeah, baby! Pretty damn impressed. But then in that first trailer, there was one thing that seemed to get a lot of people's attention, got a lot of people asking questions, and that is, what the hell is that? A lot of people have wondered if these balloon object things stretching out from the sauropod's neck has something to do with some new discovery or something like that, and I could be wrong, there could be some new details discovered, but in all actuality, this is just a different take on the possibility of what something might have looked like in life that comes from a discovery that we've already known for a long time. You see, dinosaurs had air sacs going throughout their bodies, and it's actually believed that many different species of dinosaurs had air sacs, but one of the main ones that we have the most evidence of is sauropods. They had these air sacs throughout their bodies, but especially in the neck. And I've seen paleo art before that depicts actual external air sacs that expand and contract. Now these air sacs throughout their body serve several different purposes, but in sauropods especially, one of the main uses was basically to make them lighter. Sauropods are, after all, the largest animals that have ever existed on land. In fact, they've only been beaten out by whales, and that's only because whales live in the water. Now the reason why no other animals like mammals have been able to evolve to be as large as sauropods pods on land is because basically they would crush themselves internally. And we see that in marine mammals like whales whenever they beach themselves. The animals suffocate not because they can't breathe the open air, but because they don't have the buoyancy of the water, so all of their weight bearing down on their bodies, basically they can't expand their lungs to be able to breathe. The largest mammals that we know of that have ever lived on land is a toss-up between Paraceratherium and Paleoluxodon, and it's pretty much believed that that's about the maximum that mammals could achieve, which is nowhere near the size of the largest sauropods. But these air sacs allowed sauropods to be much lighter than any other animal that could achieve that kind of body size. And in fact, it's actually this same adaptation that, as I said before, existed in all different species of dinosaurs, that actually still exists in birds today, and largely is responsible for their ability to fly. So is this really what sauropods look like? Uh, I don't know. In fact, we can't know 100% for sure. It's definitely more believable than this. Shut up, Tim Tim. This is just one of those things that some people take some creative liberties with, and I think it looks cool. It's definitely a very interesting and unique take on what this iconic group of animals may have looked like in life. Like, this is looking like walking with dinosaurs for this generation. And that, I mean, everybody knows walking with dinosaurs. It's gonna be good, and I have a feeling I'm gonna be talking about it a lot more. Maybe in these little short videos like this, maybe... Maybe I'll do more of an in-depth analysis once it comes out. Maybe I'll do one for each of the five episodes. I don't know. Let me know what you guys would like to see. Would you guys like to see me talk more about this epic documentary series coming out on May 23rd? I just have to get an Apple TV Plus account. I would never thought I would ever say those words. Have a good one, everybody. I think the real question is, why do they... Why does every single documentary about dinosaurs put baby T-Rexes in the documentary? Why? We've literally never found a baby T-Rex before, ever. Why do they... Like...